from the Lord which made heaven and earth. He will not slumber thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming forth from this time forward, and even forevermore. I just read the 121st Psalm, the complete, complete Psalm. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of the Word. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father God, we come in the precious name of Jesus. We thank you for the blood that was shed that allows us entrance into the people to the throne room, Father. We give you praise. We thank you, God, that there is none other. We give you honor and glory today. We thank you right now. We lift up your name, Father. We thank you, God, that you have blessed our gathering together. We praise you right now for the presence of the heart of our child, of the Holy Ghost right now. We thank you right now because you are holy and there is none like you. Bless us today. Lord, we pray right now as we long for your presence. We long for your glory. We long for your power. We long for you, oh God. Bless us today. We need you, God. We can't make it without you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we magnify you today. Hallelujah. That you are your God. Exceedingly 
be going for biopsies four times, I'm sorry, for mammograms four times this year, and they suspected cancer. And I went in for a biopsy two weeks ago, and it came back negative. Sunday morning there, the breakfast is going to be held uh, uh, at the 
the 8.30 hour, and it's gonna flow to 9.30, I'm sorry, to 9.45, morning hour, Tiger Sunday School, 9, help me out. To 9.15, that's what I said. <laughs> Thank you, sis. To 9.15, breakfast will be served, but there will be no breakfast served after 9.15, so all of y'all who like the coffee and your breakfast, come on out. Now, if you just like the coffee, Every morning at 8.15, we have our coffee club from 8.15 to 9.15. So come on out and meet us in the Hebrews Halls. Meet you a nice cup of coffee. Amen? Amen. 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 And have a fellowship. How many of you all love to be in fellowship? Yes, Amen. Amen. Listen, let me think, let me think of this. What called the church you all to grow and to be strong? When you read the book of Acts, the Bible said they would go from house to house breaking bread. And many times when we come together, we break bread and have a time of fellowship. That gives you a chance to meet me because most of the time when the church dismissed, some of us run out of here like the place is on fire. <laughs> Amen. Tell the person by said, it ain't going to burn down. It ain't going to burn down. I know it's broken, but it's not going to burn down. Amen. We decree in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And so, since we, since we don't always fellowship after service, I encourage you to come on out in our time of fellowship and, and, and be here. Speaking of fellowship, on the 3rd, what's that date? November 20th. November 20th, we'll be here in, uh, in a, a, a dinner immediately following service. All right? I ask you to invite your family, invite your friends to come on out. That's the 20th of November. From Y'all just get, get my, my preaching time short. 12.30. Can I put that to like, to like 1 30 so I can preach a long time? <laughs> forget it, forget it, forget it. From 12, <laughs> from, bless your heart. From 12 30, so listen, I encourage you to invite your family, invite your friends to come on out and be a part of that time of appreciation. And let's break a break together. Amen? Amen. Come on, y'all, give our choir a big hand as they come.
tell somebody that he will take care of you. Be not afraid. 
only believe. I'm going to say this. It's be not afraid. Only believe. Help me, priest. Look at the person by the temple and say, neighbor, neighbor. Whatever, you do, whatever you do, never lose hope. Come on, maybe the person you told didn't receive a tax, find somebody else to pick them in the face and tell them, say, neighbor, neighbor. I was just speaking to my other neighbor. And they were acting real funny. Acting real funny. Neighbor, neighbor, I'm going to speak to you. I decree to you in the name of Jesus. Whatever you do, never, never, never lose hope. When you're standing, let me pray. Father, in Jesus' name. Thank you for this time of sharing with these, your people. Now, God, I pray for these few moments that you would speak, God, through my mind. Think through my mind and speak through my lips of clay. Father, none of me, all of you, we bless you. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. You may have your seat in the house. Family, I, mu I, 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 I must confess to you that uh, this is the subject matter of our lesson today. Uh, it's not original. If any of you all receive one of these bracelets, way my pocket now. One of these bracelets right here. I got today's lesson from this, this bracelet in honor of uh, breast cancer awareness month. And the other day, I was you know how you something you can see over and over again, but all of a sudden it began to speak to you. And, and I was meditating on. A different word, this word began to speak to me to never lose hope. And the reason you all that's important because we're in a season where there are people everywhere who are losing hope. There are people all around the country and all around the world, and there are some thick people who are even in your homes who have found themselves in a position of losing hope. After what does that mean? They have, they're losing hope of ever having their dreams fulfilled. Let me ask you, how many of you all have some things before God that you believe in God to bring the past in your life? Amen. And the truth be told, sometimes you all, it appears as though God is taking his sweet time. Maybe it's just how I look at it. Sometimes it appears though God is taking forever. But understand, you should never lose hope if the dream God has placed in your heart has come from God. And some of you all have some businesses that are locked up on the inside of you that, that God wants to birth and bring the past through you. And what the devil is doing is telling you that you cannot have a business in this economy. But how many folk know that I don't care how bad the economy is, God knows how to get a blessing in your life. Uh, tell the person Christ that God knows how to do it. God knows how to do it. And some of you, God has placed a book. God has given you or allowed you to go through some of the experiences that you have gone through. And God wants us to share our experiences. And God said, if you put it in a book, then someone else will be encouraged by what you pen. Pastor, I can't begin to tell you how many, how many young men I've talked to based on what God has brought me through. And when you know that God has brought you through anything, you know for sure you have a testimony to tell somebody about God's goodness. Come on. How many folks in the house can testify that God, I have a testimony about how good God has been to me. It might be yes, he woke you up this morning. That's a testimony. It might be he started you on your way. That's still a testimony. It might be he opened doors that no man can close. That's still a testimony. Somebody declare and say, I got a testimony. I want you to begin by helping you understand that no matter what temptation, what test or trial comes your way, no matter how bad things may appear, you and I should never, ever lose hope. You know, like I do over the past few years, you all, the spirit of giving up has flooded our land, you all, like a tsunami. I've not heard about so many folks who have committed suicide, folk that we thought who were strong, who were prominent, took their own lives because they could not see hope. Can you imagine living 
in this world and not seeing any hope. Have, do you know what it feels like? And most of us don't know what, what it feels like. But, it, but can you imagine waking up every morning and having no hope to eat anything all day long? Can you imagine getting out of, or waking up and having no place to lay your head? Can you imagine waking up every morning and having to live life all by yourself? And many times when folk are in the middle of a crisis, it is easy to lose hope when you are in the middle of a crisis. Pastor, what do you mean? There are people who are walking off their jobs with no consideration that they got to pay bills on tomorrow, but leaving their place of employment because they don't have any hope. Come on, there are folk who are walking out of marriages after 35 years, and they give up on their relationship, and they leave because they don't have any hope. There are some folk, watch this now, who are leaving God. Yeah. Let me park there for a second. There's some folk who are leaving God because they don't think that God loves them enough to do what they ask God to do. All but the fact that God woke me up this morning in the reading of praise him all by itself. The fact that I can have breakfast in the morning in the reading of praise God all by itself. The reason if I can get up and dress myself, if I can get up and feed myself, if I can comb my own hair, come on, if I can put on my own clothes, that's the reason to praise God all by itself. Would you know the person by your tongue say, I got a reason to give God glory? Understand, I mean, what the devil wants to do is call the children of God to put themselves or find themselves in a state of depression. I've learned over the years that depression, you all, is real. And there are so many folks who are in the household of faith who are fighting depression. They're singing depressed. They're shouting depressed. They're giving depressed. They come to church and put their hands up but on the inside. They're full of dead men's bones. And the only reason is because they don't have hope that God is still going to do what he said he would do. But I came to encourage at least 10 folk to tell you that God is still going to do what he said he was going to do. You may not see it today and you might not see it tomorrow, but I want to encourage you that God is still going to do what he said. Would you want the person by you and declare that God is still going to do it? Oh, I feel something here that God is still going to do what he said. Somebody, all the songs that he may not come when you want him, but I know he's on time. Is there anybody in the house who knows that God will be on time? Tell somebody he's always on time. Israel found himself at a Red Sea and didn't think God was going to come through. But God came through right on time. I want to hear that anybody in this room who ever found yourself at a red sea wondering if God going to come through. But some kind of way, God made a way out of no way. Maybe it's just me. God knows how to make a way out of no way. God knows how to open a door. Just somebody and say, what we do it, what we do it, what we do it. Oh, come on, what he do it? What he make a way for you? Won't God do something that looks impossible? Won't God make a way? Won't God make the enemy behave? Won't God come through? Somebody say he'll do it, he'll do it, he'll do it. One of the things I've learned about God is this. That no matter where I find myself, God never allows me to get in anything. Well, that God can't bring me out of That God cannot bring you out of. The Bible says, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. Oh, but God who is faithful. Oh, is there anybody in the house who can shout off of God's faithfulness? Oh, I came to tell somebody that the God we serve, Father, is a faithful God. Every time I had my back against the wall, God showed up. Every time I thought I was going to miss it, God showed up. There had no temptation taking you, but such is coming to me. But God, who is faithful, I dare tenfold how faithful. Come on, if God brought you out of anything, 
shout faithful. If God ever open a door, shout faithful. If God if the enemy hang in your life, you ought to shout faithful. God is faithful. He is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted? Watch this now. Above that you are able. life and because I knew you could handle it. All oh, where I'm at, I can handle it for. Are there any folk in the house who can say, God, if you allow it, then it because I can handle it. God never said I was going to like it, but if God allowed it, God knew I could handle it. Somebody say, I can handle it. I can handle it. Who will not suffer you to be tempted that which you are able, what is now, to bear. He says, but will, here it is, with the temptation. Huh. What is now? God says, even with the temptation, with the test, with the trial, with the being, with being uncomfortable, God says, with that temptation, I will make the way of escape that you may be able The Lord is mine. Yeah. Ooh, how many folks in the house know that God is your shepherd? Yeah. See, it's one thing to have a shepherd, but the, the, the benefit of being a sheep is I got somebody who's able to take care of me. Yeah. See, when David said, The Lord is my shepherd, David said, I ain't got to want for nothing. Oh, oh I'm okay telling you, when you need this and you need that, the economy. Is telling you, you 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 gonna be broke, don't have enough money, but I serve a God who is the shepherd over my life, and God knows my in, He knows my out, He knows when I get up, and God knows when I go to sleep. God said, I'll call my angels to camp around about you. If there anybody in the room who knows that the angel of the Lord and camp around about you, then the Lord is my shepherd. He said, that's the other thing he said, and I don't want for none. Ooh, somebody say none. Come on, he said, God is so into me that I don't need nothing. Ooh, he supplies all of my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Is there anybody in the room that that's your testimony that God will supply all of your needs? have a million, but oh dear God, I don't have no bills either. Come on, maybe I can't run as fast as I did, but I can still pick them up and I can still put them down. Maybe I can't run as fast as I like it, but I can still get to the place I'm going. But you know somebody tell me, I will tell you, you will get there. Oh yes, I can but tell somebody, child God, you will get there. It might take you a minute, but you will get there. It might take like a long time, but you will get there. Now, say, Pastor, you're saying never lose hope. Well, Pastor, if, how do I know if I lost hope? So, tell me, Pastor, what hope is? Write this down. Hope is our earnest expectation in God's ability that by faith he will bring to pass a desire of our heart. Oh, somebody said, Pastor, say it again, say it again. I'm glad you made it. I'm going to say that again. That was good to me. Hope is our earnest expectation in God. Somebody say, in God. Hope is our earnest expectation in God's ability. Watch this now. That by faith, he will bring to pass a desire in our heart. Uh -huh. Let me ask you, how many of y'all have a desire in your heart? Amen. Ooh, come on. I mean, you have a God desire in your heart. Amen. And so here it is now. The pastor told me, how then? Do I get this desire in my heart to come to pass? Watch this. Look at Psalm 37, verse 4. All right. 
The word says to delight thyself. Also in the Lord, here it is, and he shall give thee the desire of thy heart. Let me, let me pause for a second and help somebody out. This is not a card blunt text. Bring, 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 bring. Many times we read over the text and believe what it's saying is God going to give me everything I ask for. Somebody say, that's not what it's saying. That's not what it's saying. Family, look in the text. What it means is this. When we make the Lord, or what the Lord wants our priority, he will then create a desire inside of us to ask him for a thing. Watch this now, that fits his purpose. Now, when we ask him, for the thing he placed in our hearts. Uh -huh. Now God can legally bring to pass the thing you asked for because it was his plan all along. Y'all right. missed that over right. again. Right. I said, God will give you a desire. Yeah. Yeah. See, you say, Pastor, all of a sudden, I just, something just came to my mind. No, baby, God put that desire on the inside of you. God then put that desire in you so that when you pray, you say, Father, I don't know what it's coming from, but God, all of a sudden, I have a desire for this. Yeah. Let me ask you, have anybody ever prayed and asked God for a thing that was a, that was way outside of your reach? Mm -hmm. Oh, maybe I'm the only one. The Bible said God can do more than I ask or think. Right. And so if I can ask or think it, then it's in God's speech. And God now, watch it now, creates that desire. You know, that burning sensation on the inside. But I just got that. Anybody ever had one of those, I just got that. And so now you go to the and say, Father, this thing comes from no place. But God says, oh, I know where it came from. That the thing you were asking me for came from me. God's money. And so when you pray now, God can now legally give you that desire. Oh, yeah. This is why if you pray in the Holy Ghost, you ought to pray every day in your heavenly language. Say, Pastor, why is that? You're a good class, and I'm glad you asked. The reason I pray in the Holy Ghost, because the Bible said when I pray, I pray, watch this now, to God those things that God needs to hear. Because you don't know what's coming up tomorrow. But the God you serve has already been in tomorrow and knows what tomorrow holds. And so when I pray in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit prays the perfect prayer that God wants to hear. Because sometimes when we pray, we pray doubt, fear, and unbelief. And God says, I can't accept that. Because without faith, it's impossible to please God. But when I pray in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost knows just what to tell God. When I pray in my heavenly language, he knows just what God wants to hear. I don't know every scripture from Genesis to Revelation, but the Holy Ghost of God, he knows the whole Bible. And every time God wants to hear a certain thing, I just pray in the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost of God tells God what God wants to hear. And God says, the thing you are praying is the very thing I want to give you anyway. See, this is why every time you want to pray, the devil tells you, God ain't hearing that the devil is a liar. Oh, I am mean, the devil is a liar. The reason I prayed that prayer that looks so outlandish is because God put the desire in my heart. And so when you pray, you say, God, give me a desire from you. Because if I pray a prayer that God wants to hear, God is obligated to answer that prayer. Is it possible, Lord, that the reason that some of our prayers are not coming to pass is because we're praying things that God didn't ordain for our lives? See, you are praying a prayer that if God don't come through, I can do it on my own. You are saying, God, I'm praying, but if you don't come through, I got money in reserve to pay for it, God, in case you don't come through. I got somebody, Junebug, to quit up or Pookie, who got some money on the side, and they'll make me. 
me alone. But all the kind of prayers I pray, I pray prayers that are way outside of my budget. Or I pray the kind of prayers that if God don't do it, maybe it can't be done. I pray the kind of prayers that unless you are a billionaire, you can't do it. But I serve a God that God is not short and God ain't not concerning his promise. If he said it, he will do it. And if he spoke it, he will bring it to pass. Can I find at least 10 people in the house that will say, God will do it? Stand you all by faith yes, God. in what the word of God says. Yes, God. We have the right then, why this now, to receive yes, God. what God says. Yes, God. Which then engages our expectation yes. and our hope yes. in God. Yes. Let me give you some Bible. Look at Hebrews chapter 11. You know it from the end of the game. <laughs> Hebrews 11 verse 1. It says, now Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. Okay, I give you all a quick theology lesson. Most of the time, we preach now faith. We preach from the word now in the text. But the now in the text is not the now. The now in the text is a transitional phrase. When the apostle moves from one thought to the next thought. And then he says, now, faith. So, Pastor, where then is the is in faith or the, the now in faith? The now is in the is. Help me, Holy Ghost. The now is in the is. Watch this. What color is this town? Black. This town, look at me. Look at me, look at me, look at me. Look at me. This town is black. It's not going to be black. This town is black right now. So faith is. What makes faith now is because it is. Somebody say it is. So faith is, here it is, the softness. The ingredients yes. of the yes. things I'm hoping for. Abba. Yes, God. Abba. But it's also faith is, here it is, the evidence. Yes. Abba. The, 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 yes, the, the, the positive proof. Yes. The, 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 ain't no doubt about it. Yes. Ooh, would you let somebody say, ain't no doubt about it? Yes. Right, I, I, I'm, I'm going country on y'all. Show enough, show enough, show enough. It is the evidence yes, God. of the things, yes. here it is, that I don't see yet. Now, Samuel, watch this. Notice God didn't say it does not exist. Yes, preach, preach, preach. We're crying because we don't see it. Let me tell you what, how faith works. Watch this. How many of you all, you find your income tax check? Income tax. How many of you all, when you file, and if you, if you have money, money coming back, when you saw you had a couple dollars coming back? I mean, come on, I, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, some real change. Come on, you had like over $5. Some of y'all, that child care thing, you had $2,000 per child. You were like, you were like, two, four, six, eight, ten. All right now. Come on, how many of y'all was counting? You was counting your change. Come on, two. I got three. I think I got, I got five kids and two. I love y'all. Two, four, six, eight, ten. You know, like, I expect $10,000 uh, on the same. But now, watch this. Pastor, we didn't even see the check. The check never hit our hand. We was calling somebody as soon as we left the block. H and R. If y'all watching, pay me. As soon as we left H and R block, and they said, "Congratulations, you have ten thousand dollars coming." 
you back. You got your car, girl, let me tell you. I just left the account. And they told me I got ten thousand dollars. And you were shouting, you rejoiced, you could got your laptop out, and you were shopping, telling folks, I'm gonna buy this, I'm gonna buy this, I'm gonna buy this, and you didn't have I'm, y'all, I'm going country now. You didn't have air done. But Mama Smith, all they had was the word from a man. Woo! If you can shout over a word from a man, how much more can you shout? How much more can you shout? A word from the Lord, and I wonder if there's anybody in the house that said I will shout over a word if the word says I'm healed, and I don't take what God said. If the word declares I'm free, I'm gonna take what the word says. If the word says I'm delivered, I will take. Somebody said, Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. Take it. If God calls you here, good by faith. What God said. Take what God says. Take what God says. Is there anybody in the room that got a take back spirit? Or tell the devil, I'm taking back my joy. I'm taking back my peace. I'm taking back my home. I'm taking back my mind. I don't get my sanity back. Somebody shall take it. You got about faith. Take what the devil stole from you.
party? It's not yours. I don't mean it's not, I don't mean not yours. It's not yours. Some of y'all heard nachos, you're like, nachos, where did you just wear in the back? Some of y'all put that thing in there, made a long box. Put your finger down. Because watch this. As long as I'm making payments, it belongs to somebody else. But faith takes what God said as already being yours. In other words, faith possesses what the word of God declared is mine. See, you can't wake up in the morning and talk about, oh God, my bunch is killing me. Baby, them bunions may be yours. But stop saying it's killing you. Pastor, you know, Pastor, I was telling you the other day, you know, when I was, when, when, <laughs> when we first got married, Pastor, I could just jump out the bed, no power. I wake up, I just get up, whoop, die going. But the whole I got, I get up, go inside of the bed. <laughs> Come on. Besides me, y'all. You go know, inside of the bed, you think about it, say, now, should I? <laughs> should I stay or should I go? <laughs> Come on, y'all looking funny, Pat. Let me, let me keep on living. Jesus' name. Yes, God. Yes, God. Hallelujah. 
Yes, God. And now, watch this. The assurance is in what he's already obtained from me on Calvary. Amen. Somebody say, it's already mine. Oh, yeah. Yeah, gotta move, gotta move, gotta move. Let's thank look at the text. You, thank you, Lord. In our text, yeah, God. here it is. There's a little girl God. who was sick God. unto death. Yes, no father wants to ever be in this position. Where their child, that I'm not sure if it's the only child, Bible didn't say, I can't speculate. But this girl, Bible says, was sick. And she was sick unto death. Now watch this. This girl should have gotten the Irish the confidence he needed to keep her. Because even though his daughter was sick, watch this now, the Irish had the attention. I'm going to say it again. Even though his daughter was sick, yes, but the Irish had the attention of Jesus. How many of you all want to have the attention of Jesus? Now, I just heard you say, Pastor, how in the world can I get the attention of Jesus? Y'all, I can't park there because I do. We're going to go up right quick and I'm going to preach hard today. But the Bible said that the Irish came to Jesus. Mark is hearing this. He came to him worship. If you want to get the attention of Jesus, come with your worship. Because worship is not your giftiness. Worship says, I know what you can do. Worship says, I know you are a healer. Father, I know you are a way maker. Father, I know you are a deliverer. Father, I know that you know what's going on in my mind. I know that you're the giver of peace. Worship said, I tell God what I know about him. Yes, God. Glory to God. Glory to God. The Bible says the Irish came to him worship. Yes, God. He yes, says, God. if worship now, he says, if you come yes, God. and lay hands on my daughter, uh -huh. she shall yes, be healed. Now, that's worship. Look at me. He didn't say, Lord, if and then you can do something. <laughs> and Lord, I'm really busy. I checked the schedule. And Lord, I know a whole lot of folk around you, Jesus. They don't feel good either, Lord. And I know somebody died last week of the same thing. But Lord, if you will. Stop on by here, G. No. Mr. Pam, he says, you come. Lay hands on her. She'll be healed. Ah, Mr. He says, come. Lay hands on her. She'll be healed. His expectation was in the fact that if he laid hands on her, that she would live as a result of him laying his hands on her. Now, something happened between verse 25 and verse 35. There was an interruption by someone else who needed his power. But in the end of the day, Pastor, that, there was a girl who was 12 that was sick. There was a woman with an issue of blood for 12 years. Yeah, yeah. The same time, they were at Jerusalem General Hospital. <laughs> While one girl was going in for an appointment, a different girl was going in to be born. And their sicknesses collided at the same time. Anyway, I got to move. Here they're going to work it down. The Bible says that they came back and said, Jay Iris, trouble not the master any longer. She's dead. What did you do? When the, the hope you had in God appears to be the next. Where is your faith when the devil bombards your mind and tells you, stop praying? Where is your faith in God when your 
body is wrecked with pain and everything appears as though God is not going to do what he said. Where is your hope in God? Watch all of him in this. Zippy Swan and the kid and say he was in hustling. <laughs> he overheard the conversation. He says, be not afraid. Thank you, Lord. Only believe. Hi, ah, Mr. He says, keep your faith back to the place when you thought it was possible. Put them 
jokers out. He said, I want you, 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 and you to get out of here. See, because when you believe in God, what you cannot do is have a bunch of non-believers around you. Y'all tap in. See, you can't have a bunch of folk who will feed you doubt and unbelief. But you believe in God for something great. Them folks told me I had cancer. I could have for them. Oh, you're going to die. The devil give a lie. I ain't I'm going. I'm going to die one day. But today is the day. You find someone who's full of faith. And say, I don't know how. God's going to do what he's going to do. But the one thing I know is that God's going to do it. Oh, you know somebody to say God's going to do it. God's going to do it. God is going to do it. You know, Jesus just, he, he was so cool. And God, he walked to the bed. Oh, the girl, who's dead? I see, I can see that in my mind, sir. The howling folks over here. He only took Peter to the job. Which means the other boys were ready yet. See, I don't care how much you say, some folk ain't ready to go with you yet. Watch this now. He comes to the world, the dead girl lady. Looks at him and says, Come the cool. Which means, don't arise. Now watch this. He has spent all day praying. He didn't have a tearing service. Come by here, dear Lord. Come by here. Come on. No. He said, Tell her. Come on. He said, Lord, come forward. And took by the hand. And when he took by the hand, she came alive because he said, Wake up. was trying to die in your life and lay your hands on it and say, I command you to come alive. Come on, I don't care what's in you. You put your hand on your own body and command it to come alive. If the devil attacking your heart, put your hand on your own heart. And I command you to come to act right. Are you hearing me? You know, don't, don't attack me. He does. If he attack Jesus, he'll attack you. Oh, yeah. But Jesus hit him with the word. What you're doing is tell the devil what he's doing. No, you fight the devil with the word of God. And speak the word over your own self. Would you know somebody say speak the word over yourself? Someone didn't say a word said, push the person right there, speak the word over yourself. You got to open your mouth and speak a word over yourself. If you believe in God to heal you, then open your mouth and say, I command this body to be healed in the name of Jesus. Come on. You know, you know arthritis is, is, is holy. Arthritis is part of being old. No, arthritis is part of the curse, baby. And your Bible says Christ has redeemed you from the curse of the law. Yes, yes. And anything that's been redeemed, I don't have to live with it if I don't want to. Right. I'm done. I'm done. Y'all listen to me, Jesus. Yes, yes. Listen, can you please say, can you please make your feet for us? I want to pray this morning because it is time now for our faith to shift. Because those who don't believe in your God are waiting to see what God does for you. And we can't blame God for what you refuse to believe for. I'm going to say it again. We cannot blame God for what we refuse to believe for. How many people in this room besides me, you need something great from God? Now, how many of y'all believe that 
God can do it. Yes. 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 Listen, to everybody that is. And I'm going to pray. And as I pray, I want you to release your faith. And whatever that thing is that you believe in God to do in your life, I want you to begin to see it already manifesting in your life. Whether it's a physical healing, whether it's a mental and emotional healing, maybe it's your marriage, maybe it's your money, whatever it is, let's begin to believe God to do what only God can do. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for every soul under the sound of my voice. God, for every man, every woman, every boy, every girl. And I pray, God, today in the name of Jesus, whatever they have on the table of their hearts, God, you told us in your word to come boldly to the throne of grace. And God, this morning we come to your grace. We come to your throne right now in the name of Jesus. And God, we're asking you by your power to release upon our life those things that you promised to our Father and we tear down every stronghold of the enemy who come to steal, kill, and destroy and we bind his powers right now in the name of Jesus. Take your hands off of God's property. Take your hands off of God's children. Take your hands off of our dreams. Take your hands off of our family. Take your hands off of our children. Take your hands off of our mind. Take your hands off of our emotions. And in the name of Jesus, we decree it done. We decree it as done. We decree it as done. We decree it as done. Bodies are healed today. Minds are renewed today. Faith is restored today. In the name of Jesus, for the glory of God. Now, God, today we thank you. We stand in faith, believe in you. That is all right done. Because your word says so. In Jesus' name, it is so. Family, come on, give it your best praise. Where you are from. Come on, give it your best praise. Come on. If that's all you got, then that's all you got. So come on, open your mouth and give our God the best praise. Come on, let the devil out of our hands and open your mouth. Come on, make the other numbers and open your mouth and give your God the best shout.
loves you more than anything. He loves you more than you love you. I invite you to come on in and pray. Right now. Right now. The pastor, I want to say, bless you, Mr. Jesus. Come on in the name of Jesus. Pastor, I'm saved, but I feel out of fellowship with God. But I want to renew my fellowship with Jesus. You came on the right day. And that's you. Let us hear here. Come on. Pastor, I want to renew my fellowship with the Father. Thank you, Lord. I've fallen short. That's okay. We all fell short before. But the problem with falling is down, is being down. Get up. Come on. That's Jesus. Pastor, I've fallen. I don't praise God and give my heart back to Jesus. Pastor, I'm saved. I'm in right standing with the Lord. And what I need is a church. But I can be fed in the word of God. So that my faith can grow by leaps and bounds. If I if that's you and the Holy Spirit is telling you, this is the place for you to come and be fed. I would love to be a pastor with you all. This was a pastor. I want to join my faith with the faith that's on you. Be a member of this church. Is there one? I wait for you. Is there one? If all hearts are clear, lift your hand. 